All right, hello everyone. This is Rafael Villa, and today I'm gonna make a tutorial for Blender 2.71, uh, making the Earth on cycles. This is a, a screenshot the, of the final product that we're gonna have. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do is just a simple. Uh, Three simple layers: uh, planet Earth, the atmosphere, as you see. And what I have is the atmosphere, the clouds, the Earth, and then I have the plane for the space and the sun, just to create that reflective. Uh, we're gonna learn how to use some tools on Blender and how to use Notes uh, to create this really nice. Um, at atmosphere creating the clouds with transparency and a simple bump mapping uh, to create that depth to the to the clouds and on the rocky mountains and Appalachies now this is gonna be a help a simple video uh, I think I can wrap it up in just one session. Well, let's start working with this and also we're going to be finishing it up in uh, the render layer to create this nice glow and the glow on the stars. Well, let's start cooking. All right, I start a new session on Blender and this is the the standard uh, the default screen when you open blender uh, we don't need the square because we're gonna do the earth now what we need to do is just deleting this uh, and then click on one so we can have the front and we're gonna add three spheres uh, I'm gonna add one first. Control A, cell core. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not the cell core that I need. We need the sphere. Control A, a sphere. And we have the sphere, and you see that it looks kind of uh, blocky. And what we're gonna do to make it look nice uh, we add, we're gonna add what is called um, a modifier uh, the modifier that we're gonna use is under the generate category subdivision surface and we're going to do so we can view it really nice uh, three steps now you see that is really nice and when it renders is gonna be six steps so if you're asking what system do I am, am I using I'm using Ubuntu uh, 14.04 LTS and uh, I have it an i7 CPU in an Asus motherboard a pro motherboard with 16 gigs of RAM uh, so I hope this make it uh, work faster. <laughs> well, these are these are the these are the specifications that I have on my computer. Just in case you ask, has 16 16 gigs of memory. I got i7 226 k. 6000 K CPU and it renders like in eight threads. All right, so we have our first sphere and we're gonna hit N, and you see that in the end we have the property. Um, menu and in this property menu you see the dimensions of this sphere and this is important because 
we're gonna create three sphere and they gonna be uh, the differences is gonna be like uh, probably seven uh, five or ten points so um, so they're gonna be really really close one to the other um, okay so we have this if we need to make a copy of this on blender we the only thing that we need to do is just shift duplicate would be shift D enter and that give us a, a duplicate now you don't see it here because it's right one above the other and we're gonna do this one uh, five point point zero five points larger so nineteen nineteen eight one point nine eighty and we're gonna copy this you just hover over the X di dimension contour C and hover over Y contour V that will copy that so we added five points so now we're gonna add here to this I'm just gonna do it like that so it, it add 10 uh, basically the earth is not completely round uh, so now we have two spheres let me click on the C key and you see that we have uh, I'm gonna turn off and you see that we have one sphere above the other the one that is in black is the first one that we did and then the second one that we have now let's turn uh, let's turn this on so this is how it looks with the modifier now we're gonna copy this once again control D control D uh, chief D I'm sorry chief D and we're gonna modify this once again and we're gonna put it five point over point zero zero five point zero zero five points more the same thing control C control V and let's add one more click it, it add ten uh, point zero one and every time we click on add or subtract all right so now let's see this again uh, let's turn this off the modifier and now you see that we have one more in top of the other all right so we have three spheres that we created this one is gonna be the atmosphere atmosphere sphere <laughs> this one is gonna be the the clouds sphere and this going to be the earth I'm, I'm not gonna add the the night lights in this tutorial because this is just for a simple I'm trying to make this as simple as possible this lamp we're gonna delete it we don't need it so we're gonna to delete the lamp and we got atmosphere selected and turn on that this is how it can look now if I change this again it this doesn't look uh, really promising that right now it's just three spheres with nothing added to it not not texture not nothing so let's put it back on zero in 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 the front in no, uh, num number pad key number one we got it on zero and now we're gonna add a plane a plane and that's gonna be our sun and we're gonna scale it with the key S 
and expand and then grab on the X you see this here you get the C and the X we're perfectly in the front so we're gonna grab it on the X axis uh, select that so we can see it wrap in the X axis move it whatever you want it and we're going to rotate key R rotate and type 90 on the number pad oh excuse me R on the Y axis and 90 and that will be perfectly 90 degrees uh, pointing to the earth what was going to be the earth and that's perfect now let's go back to number five and we're gonna close it here and here in the bottom you see a menu that said view select add object we're gonna go to view align view and we're gonna say align active camera to view and this is going to be the position of our camera right in front of our earth but we're gonna select the camera and hit grab the G key and press the scroll button and then you can zoom in and zoom out positioning somewhere around there and that's perfect let's save this uh, I got blend tutorial I, that, that was the one that you saw and we're gonna create one new earth tutorial and save so now we got uh, the most important elements uh, that we need. Uh, the plane is going to be our sunlight. So, sunlight. And it's a plane. All right. So now we have the three spheres. We have the sunlight. Now, this is important. We're going to work on we're gonna press num uh, the key number five so we work in in asymmetric view so that means that there's no perspective at all and the reason I do that is because we need to take this the earth let's hide uh, the atmosphere for the moment and the clouds and we're gonna have we got to take the earth we're gonna press tab to en to enter the edit mode and here in version 2.71 you see a new tab system in the side and you see a, a tab that say shading and UVS now we're gonna press that and we're going to say cylinder projection. We're going to do a, a UV wrap cylinder projection. Now, you say, what What did I did there? Let's expand this. Let's close this menu and this menu so I can show you what I'm going to do, what I did. Now, here, I'm going to select to view the UV image projection and then you you see this UV map now I'm gonna take this uh, and I'm gonna create a perfect square because because this is a cylinder the top part it looks like this if, if you if I close close up to that then you see how it's going to behave in the top but for for what we're doing we don't have to worry about too much in details on the top because what we need is the the shot on the side uh, if you have a project that you need to show every specific uh, more detail then probably you might need to work this a little bit uh, better than what I'm going to do 
<laughs> All right. So, so when I create the UV wrap, if I have it in other position, let me uh, delete this wrap. Uh, um, So I cannot delete it. Let's say here, reset, and that, this is my reset. Now, if, if I am in other view, if I move the perspective that you see here, you're going to see that if I do the unwrap now and I say cylinder projection, this will change. So depending on the position that you going to use, if you have a better you want to have a better view from the top then you probably might need to press the key number seven and go to the very top and then do the right cylinder projector from the top not from the side but our shot is going to be on the side so we need to do it from from the side there and we're gonna do the wrap again sitting the wrap and now you see we're we're back in business here now what i'm gonna do I, like, like i said i don't want to worry about the top and the bottom so i'm gonna deselect this uh this node that is selected i'm gonna select it and i'm gonna click the letter b Press the letter B for box and I'm gonna select the top part and now we're gonna uh, we're gonna put all those points uh, flat one with the other with a scale Y zero S letter S Y zero and that And that position all the points on the same, uh, in the same, in the same angle. Just a flat angle, and then click enter. Now, I'm going to select that, and then do the same thing in the bottom. S Y zero, enter and you see this that overlap now i'm gonna make all this point in the same position here uh, and that i need to select this i'm going to b and select all this i'm gonna say s x zero enter grab x and there you go that's gonna be my wrapping now I'm gonna select all grab X there I have my wrapping there now we can close this you see how I create another screen you just drag the the diagonal lines in the, the top that like the handle and to eliminate it just drag up with the same handle over the the one that you want to eliminate and that and I'm gonna expand this we're gonna use a lot nodes because we going to use cycles so you select on the render type in the in the top, you're gonna select cycles. Now you got that. We back to the front, and with this selected, we're going to the materials. Let me show you where I'm at. You see the materials here. I am. I'm gonna click on the materials. Gonna click a new material, and I'm gonna call it Earth Ground. 
Now I have Grant and as you notice, the default is diffuse. You get diffuse, but I'm not. I'm gonna use the diffuse, but I want to have an image that I downloaded from Visible Earth project from NASA. That's. Let me show you where is that. This is Visible Earth on NASA. They have. A beautiful sets uh, you got the night lights uh, the earth the blue marble they have all the shots from different time time periods on 2014 uh, 13 I think it is they have the the earth typography for the that we're gonna use for the bump mapping uh, on the for the bump mappings of the <laughs> of the mountains, and we're gonna use the bathymetric for the bump mapping of the ocean. And you can select whatever you want here. What I'm using, I think I'm using in from the page number two. I'm using one that doesn't have too much I think it this one July blue marble next generation and of course if you're using this uh, for any commercial use uh, you have to give credit and the credit is going to Reto Stockhill from NASA Earth Observatory uh, and I have to let you know that the, I'm gonna include all the blends of this tutorial with the tutorial but you cannot use it for any commercial use that clear let's continue let's go back to blender so I'm gonna I, I want to add that texture to my earth on on cycles render so we I, I need three at least three uh, panels here I need to add three panels first of all I need a texture coordinate because we're gonna use the UV wrap the UV that we just created and I need also I need the mapping I need to create a mapping in the, for that case then I need to go to vector and mapping Let's move this over, and then I need the image. And Control A, and we'll boot, boot. We'll look for texture, image, texture. And here I'm going to select that blender, that texture that I mentioned. That <laughs> now I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> um let's do this so we can see which one here it is we had a winner here I think is let's say because I had to reduce the size here is this one it's really big and if you have a big file it's gonna take you longer to render so I'm gonna do I'm gonna select UV and put on vector here point vector to vector and then I'm going to use this as the color now if I change this to texture I should see the earth and it's perfectly set uh, position but I need to check the UV wrapping. Let's hide this. I not I don't need this for the moment here. And UV. And UV, I'm gonna select the image. Whoa! You see how beautiful 
it looks and we need to move it over that's why you had to check remember you get your notes and then you have UV wrapping here and it kind of out of the area so I'm going to select all grab with the key G the letter X to move only in the X axis and I'm going to position you see how it moves if I go all over the place here it is I'm going to make a perfect that's perfect now let's save this again and we have our UV wrap our notes and all that now we have our perfect earth here and this is one of the errors that I tell you that if you want to keep this nice then you have to work with the UV wrapping on the top but because I only need the the front part I I don't need to be so picky <laughs> with the image. If you need to rotate this, let me show you it here. Let's change this to the object mode so we can see it clear. Now you see here in rotation, if you want to move this, you want to have the Americas in the front or Europe in the front, you have the C axis rotation and then you can move. That will move the earth perfectly. So when you're animating, you have to use that if you want to rotate the earth. All right, so we have that. Originally, I put it like in 80 degrees. I think it was, mm, no, it was like that. Because I want this to be in the shadow of the earth. To, so we can have that nice effect of the the sun uh, getting all the shapes but for that we need bump mapping and what I did to create the bump mapping the same thing that you need to do if you're creating um, if you're creating the normal uh, you go to I did I did it on GIMP and this is another we ha, I ha, I did had two compositions one in in GIMP and one in Blender and they both look gorgeous so so let me save this and let's open one of the textures Let's say this one. I'm, I'm just going to show you real quick what I did. I opened the file and reduced the size to um, perfect with scale image to 248, but with this selector, so it will uh, maintain its ratio. So I scale it because I don't want my blender to uh, to behave <laughs> running out of memory. So that's basically what I did. And now I can show you what I did. This is how it looks when you download it from from the NASA website. And but I want to make it more dra dramatic. So. I came here, I went to filters, map, bump map, normal map is here. You see that the normal is not available, is because of the colors. You, you just go to my image mode and you change it to RGB. And then if you go to filters map, then you see the normal map available because the normal map need those, those colors to create the blue for the sea uh the red 
for the x and the green for the for the y now for the bond map we don't need that so basically what I did I used these values and as a math I invert the bond map as a math 90, 90 points elevation 67.62 depth 11 x offset 0 y offset 0 water level 105 ambient 123 and apply that to that and then I save that as a bump map and that's where you see uh, here blender textures mm, cancer I forgot that you need to export it export as and when you see I export it uh, here of typography or yeah here it is normals I create normals uh, to see how it behaves so that's why I decided to go with bump map for what I'm doing but map looks more uh, more what I was looking for uh, so here we have I did the same thing with the cloud and I did the same thing with the uh, bathy the bathymetric so I had that already so I don't need to say all this I just showing you real quick what I did if you need to do that on Photoshop I won't I don't really mm, not exactly what you need to do in that case <laughs> um, I don't remember I don't have my Photoshop here I, I get it on that work but not here so let's go to blender let's keep with open source for the for the meantime let's go back to render and I need to add that bump mapping and to see the bump mapping I don't know if I'm able to see it here I'm going to to my note page oh, we can close this going to my note page and we're going to add an input no a texture image texture and we're gonna email and another image here and this one is gonna be the bump so we need go to vector and select bump and we open the image we look for the image which is in blender texture and we're going to get code get code the elevation map that says bump double click on that and we put in on height bump map now let's go to material we can see the material and I don't see the and we're going to put this like around there and let's see how it looks render what well, obviously we don't have the light selected so we gotta create the new material we're gonna put it song light and we're going to change this to a mission you see how it changed the node uh, I use the node mostly because it's easier uh, to use than trying to figure out what we want to do here and we're going to put the emission in 30 uh, that's too strong let's put it on 10 now we can start seeing what I'm looking for and you see here that the bomb mapping is working perfectly let's select the earth again and in the earth 
if you you click here it will invert that selection so it's gonna be a hole instead of a, a bump <clears throat> and for for close-ups and all that is the normal is better because it doesn't look like this rough computer type uh, pixel thing but for what I want because this is gonna be this far I need to see that I need uh, the bump map is more softer and it doesn't doesn't work as I want in in this case now another thing that you need to be aware of if you want that the effect that this is totally black only lighten this up you have to come to the word here look, look where I'm at here and you're gonna say use node and change this to total black and now you can see that this is all black and this is this is the only thing that is illuminated all right so we had that we had the bump and it looks perfect now I want to use the bump of the ISO <clears throat> of the earth the bathy <laughs> I, <laughs> I forget those terms um, <laughs> yeah it's funny the bathymetry all right so I'm, I'm saying I'm good why are you why are you messing with me come on all right so we have that but I want to to have that bath bathymetry here so I can see the bombs also the change on on the on the surface here in the water too it, it makes it more realistic right so now I'm going to add here another texture image texture and I'm gonna add, use the same UV wrap so I get three image using the same UV wrap we're going back to blender texture and we get use the 2048 bump right, we get that and now because we had two bumps we cannot I cannot grab the other one put it here because it, it will remove that one we come to uh, add the vector bump and probably in this one you want to invert it height and I'm going to add a converter math and I'm gonna have the add so I'm gonna move this so we don't miss perception of what is happening and now I have both And this, as you see, is subtem that a little bit, so the bomb mapping look kind of like the like the normal map. It's more more softer. So we have it there. Now, with that done we're done with the earth now let's move to the cloud so we open the cloud now you see that and for the clouds we need a new material we're gonna do cloud cloud layer you can call it whatever you want and we had this diffuse so we're gonna use the diffuse but we need to add the same thing and texture image texture 
we need to add the vector mapping and we need to add the input texture coordinate we're going to use an UV map that we don't have in this you have to remember it. we don't have that here I'm going to use this image as the color you see that it turns pink because this is empty so we're going to look for the clouds we we'll go to blender texture and clouds we're going to use the original open that image and you see that you cannot see it because two things but let's do the UV mapping first we hit zero <clears throat> tap for edit mode we are in wrap, wrap and shading let's close this up so you can see what I'm doing <clears throat> we're going to the UV map and this, the same thing cylinder projection and let's open this up let's go to the UV image editor and we need to do the same thing let's open this close this up and expand this and the same thing this select all B for the box select all the points in the top control S Y 0 enter this select B for box S Y 0 enter this select with A <clears throat> A with select to select all one more to this select A select all one more to select B select all this side and SX0 and move it enter grab grab X G X and there you go we have it there this select select all a scale X expand it wait a minute Grab X, let's put it on the center and scale X and put it there. We save it again, make sure that we don't lose, and we look for the cloud. And this is how it is set the UV wrap. Now we say we have saved that and let's see again the materials and you see the clouds but you see we don't we cannot see the earth let's go back to object mode so we can see what are we doing so now I need to make this a transparency I, I don't need the black area so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create I'm gonna add add another shader it's gonna be transparent I'm gonna put that then I had to mix those shader actually we're gonna add to it another shader that is add shader and you put it there so it connects the one and the other and transparency and the R file we're gonna put on that <clears throat> So now we have that, let's see how it renders. And there you have your clouds with transparency. So you know almost look what I'm what we're looking for. But we still we still have lot to do. Alright, so the same thing. We're gonna create we we have this and we want to do the, uh, we want the clouds to look kind of bumpy like they are with with depth and obviously if you see that the clouds are over an area that you don't want to or you want to clear out you can move the clouds here the same thing as you did with the earth 
or you want to have that more cover with clouds you look for with an area that has a lot of cloud like that one and you can do that and right now I have it on zero on that original one so we we kind of look in what what we are doing right <laughs> it's being fun so let's add another image texture here in the notes let me expand this and now we can close this because we ain't gonna use UV wrapping anymore um, so we put this here and we're gonna open actually let me cancel this if I um, if I'm not mistaken we don't need this Oh yes, 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 yes. Oh my god. Yes, we need. I create a bomb for the clouds. So let's go to Blender, Texture, and Cloud Bomb. And and again, you you can use whatever you want. You can use uh, another option and uh, normals if you want to. Uh, for my taste, I would I like in this case a bump bump mask is not the most elegant way to do things, but it works for me for what I'm trying to accomplish here. All right, so I have my clouds, and now I'm gonna add the bump map again. We're going to vector bump, and we're going to height. And in this case, we're going to use, to add it to displacement. Let's put it in a position that we can see. And now you see the bomb mapping. You can you can play around like I did. You can play around which version with with which one will work best for what you want and there you can use it there or you can use it on normals uh, in small details on normals so I kind of like it there so let's put down the strength to out to 4 I think it is uh, 0 0.4 yeah that's what I what I used and now we have our earth reflecting and our clouds you see how easy it was to create use the transparency because transparency uh, I don't know why in the in the in the video industry is just the black layer so the black the black in the back will be considered like transparency when when you use a JPEG that is black and white and you use the transparent and put the alpha there the black becomes the alpha so it's really nice when we don't have to do anything else to, to kind of look what we're looking for let's go to textures and materials and that kind of so now now we have go back to the render too so we can see what we're doing so now you have the beautiful earth with the light of the sun here but now there's something else that we need to do because when the atmosphere when the light hits the atmosphere and you see on the pictures of the earth there's like a glow around it something like the reflection like the the atmosphere reflecting the sun but it doesn't cover all it just cover just one side of the of the earth so to do that effect we're gonna obviously we're gonna use nodes we're gonna select the atmosphere and we're gonna say to sh show us the atmosphere and we're gonna create a new material atmosphere at 
mo dot sphere. So we have the atmosphere, and obviously we're gonna use the diffuse, but we're gonna add a transparency shader, and we're gonna mix that shader. And this is going to be kind of a bluish, like the atmosphere. And for the frac, frac, fac, the factor, we're going to use add input Fresnel. Let's try that like it is and put in frac. And Ooh, not seeing what I'm trying to do to get here. Let's put 1.2. So it's backwards. So I need this here. So there you go. That's the look we're looking for. Now let's try this again with 1.4 to see how it looks. Uh, it's too much. 1.24. And that looks better. Beautiful. Now, this is the thing. I want this to be a diffuse like this, but to have kind of like a reflection, like emitting light because it reflects the sun and this doesn't give me that sensation it's just like like a force sphere receiving the sun and it displacing so let's add another shader first of all let's add another input and it's gonna be RGB and we're gonna try to copy this color and use that color because we're going to use the same color in the emission uh, and now we're going to add another shader emission emission is here we're going to use the same color and then we're going to mix the shades, shaders in the top in the bottom and that's too much <laughs> obviously we gonna put it closer really close and we're gonna change that to point five something like that Let's see point one point three. All right, that kind of give me what we were looking for. So we have the mix shader. So, this is kind of what I was looking for, but I like that darker, so we need to do that, do that after the render. So, oh, yes, just put that there, and we're going to add now. To avoid that, we're going to add the last pass, and we're gonna do reflect reflection ray. What is it? Or 
singular array. There you go. That's the singular array for the mission. Now we can put that on five of one point five. There is the look we are looking for. Let's put that rough and up to six hundred point six forty two. Yeah, that's good. And then you see that the light even reflects all around it if you want you can leave it like that uh, but you have to reduce the strength and let's see you can play this around that kind of looks So if you want to do the same effect they they have on the splash page, let me show you. But as far as I understand, when it, when there is no light, there's no light. So you see that it's reflecting here because they show in the sun here. Well, that that happens if the sun probably isn't back. But if the sun isn't this side there's no reflection unless there's another celestial body reflecting light but all other this this is just a nice view but not real obviously now if we want to make it real let's make this what was what's the one singular yeah singular that the look we're looking for so we almost done that was faster than the first time we tried <laughs> all right so we had that let's save this and now let's make the other plane the plane that is gonna hold the space so we gonna move um we're going to add a plane, add plane, and the same thing, we're going to grab it here, and then rotate on the X axis, 90 degrees, and let's go back to our view to see how we need to scale it, let's scale X, let's give it a little more room scale y scale y oh Ooh -hoo. scale c there yeah it's one in the morning so you please give give me a break so this is gonna be the space So for the space plane, we need to add here new, and we're going to put space material, and it's going to be diffuse, we're going to add a texture image, and we're going to add an input texture coordinate, it's going to be Generate. Let's see if we don't need to do the mapping because I don't have a map. Well, if I want to, let's just add the mapping just to show you how it works, what it means, the mapping. If you don't have any idea what is that, like I didn't in the past. So let's go to materials. That's how it's gonna look. Let's go to texture and should should be pink. 
Uh, let's go to the render. And there, it's pink. Now, let's look for an image. I downloaded an image from the from the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo. It was a nice star field generated by the software. And there it is. That's really nice. So if you want to download it, but just for, you cannot use it commercially, as far as I understand, is this image. I downloaded from this website. Uh, they are Creative Commons, but I don't know how creative. If this is under Creative Commons, the website is under Creative Commons. Uh, so don't get sassy. <laughs> so, so keep it real. So we have that. We have the space, but we need to add more boys. Uh, <laughs> Whatever, yeah. Come on, add. I'm going to have in color. Use saturation. And we're gonna add uh, color, brightness, and contrast. And we're gonna add. color light fall off and we can put the quadratic to the right it's really bright so let's go down to, to I think it was 22 2 and then I give contrast but not that much. There. And then the saturation just down to seven. That gave me the, the that beautiful black that blends with this black. I don't know what I did that just <laughs> let's see what it does. So I have that set. It looks kind of beautiful. Now, because the Earth is like uh, inclined, so it's not perfectly straight to the sun, but I want the, the picture to be straight like that. What I'm gonna, going to do Let's go back to solid. I'm going to select this and let's go back to perspective and push it in the axis going up and rotate on the Y axis just a little bit like that. Then let's see how it looks. How that looks. I go back to the render. And that's more like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright. So now what I'm gonna do, I first you gotta come here and make sure that everything is working perfectly. If you want to use the GPU in my case. The, my my video card only have one gig of memory so my CPU is faster and in sampling is it in sampling or performance in performance you see that I have that is going to use all the threads on my computer right now it, there, we I have eight threads uh, the tiles I put at 64 so he render faster. Uh, light pass I 
set it to 88 max and minimum I don't need too much light pass here sampling obviously now you see that it's rendering up to 10 if I come here in sampling and I say I want to see it up to a hundred it will keep refreshing until it goes to a hundred uh, I mean on the preview I'm sorry preview so it's going to start running until it has the 100 tiles so you can see exactly what you're looking for it, and it's a like cleaner render uh, let me close this I don't think oh yes we're going to use it we're going to use this a little bit more so now the render I'm gonna put it on 500 at 50% the output if you want a, a transparent a transparent PNG then you don't have to add a background and you just go here you can output uh, man I'm always forgetting where my things are <laughs> on film you had to set to transparent so you see it here that it turns transparency if I don't have this let's if I don't have uh, where's the space here so I can render the earth only so it's up to you uh, you can for example you I did this to make composition in GIMP and but for here what I, what I want to accomplish I can accomplish it here so I don't I don't need to go to that now if you're making an animation for example you're adding a key for the C axis for the C uh, let's go to the earth for the C to, to see the earth rotating then you might need to change this to a rate 30 30 frames just make sure that you're using the same thing that you're gonna use on uh, on the video that you you're doing normally is 25 frames what I'm normally do is to create more frames so I can uh, reduce the speed I can I can work with that there but yeah that's how you set the render if you do an animation and of course uh, where's the output uh, dimensions you can set the which one you want HDTV HDVC Pro I think that's for for Panasonic cameras and so all that so whatever you can use presets there now I'm gonna leave this rendering and while it's rendering I'm gonna pause the video to see the last uh, how it look in the last render in the 50% render and then we're going to apply some effects on the render. All right, see you. See you soon. All right, so the render just finished, and now we're going to use uh, nodes to add some effects to that render. So, what we're going to try to accomplish is this rendering it looks beautiful I like the way it looks but it need that finale that that will hit the score you know something like this that's what we're going to try to accomplish that lining that brightness and contrast 
that you can see in the real world, in the real life, uh, that that they're shining. You see, you see that star. It doesn't shine at all like that. It just. But when you look at the sky, you can see that uh, reflection. That the beauty of nature. That's the beauty of nature. Now. Let's try to grab that beauty. <laughs> and as you see, we have these the materials and the renders and the textures. So we going to select the render, use nodes and backdrop. Yep. All right. So here we are. Got the no, this is the render, and this is what you see the render layer. This is the, it holds the render resort. And we're gonna create we're gonna add an output. So it's gonna be the viewer, the backdrop. So we can compare what we're doing. So we got now this is the composite, this is what you're looking here, and this is the viewer. Let me put it here so we can follow it. So we're going to add some brightness and contrast. We're going to color, color and brightness and contrast and we're going to put it there and we're going to add some contrast. Uh, and then, there you go. We had that contrast there. But now we're going to add the, the glow. And this is how simple it is. So we have the color. Let me see if I remember what it, it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the filter can come to clear. And this is kind of tricky. The glare is what going to give us. We're going to. I always use the highest <laughs> and we change it to fog glow and we're gonna put this on to I think it was mix it was minus one and size give it the maximum so all right so this is what I get this is how it looks this is what I get and this is what I did I put a pause because I didn't want to waste too much time on this so I added the bucket blur so give it a little blur uh, that generates our our eyes kind of blur all all the all the um, all the ingredients on <laughs> on the picture and we have the brightness and contrast bright to 0.8 let we can put it to 0.9 if we want to uh, and we use the glare with tricks that gives you that kind of nice looking stars kind of glowing that glow on, on those and of course the one that I did before the color here it was different I, I make it made it like a lighter blue but I like this one better and the threshold to point zero one the mix will be minus 0 0.5 iteration 5 color modification point two two fifty. actually I didn't work with that I don't know if you can see a difference and the less it has the blurry will be so it, it kind of nice you can play with that the, the resort that you like most you can you can use 
actually there's no there's no unique way there's no any unique way to do things there's a couple of ways to do uh, to get this effect but from my point of view uh, it looks beautiful and if we want to apply that to our render we just put connect the clear to the composite and then you see the composition will get this but that's a nice uh, tool so if you if you want to look see how it looks uh, before and after you can have that and this is beautiful well this has been a pleasure for me to be doing this tutorial for you guys um, I'm kind of new to blender well I've been using blender for three five or almost six years and I'm still in <laughs> a new uh, on blender um, as you see I, I I don't know all the ter terminology for 3d and uh, but I I'm having fun doing this I hope you like this tutorial we we'll see you next time happy designing and happy coding this is for designers gate Rafael Vila see you soon Bye.